Appreciate you, KGB. Let's get it going. Man, because we got a motherfucking special working, working his ass off as usual. Yes, sir. Doing a, basically kind of setting up uh, the website right now to kind of go through a whole transition period. Uh, as you've seen for a while now, I've been running everything under like the feral name. Yeah. Uh, but I want to like transition it into something bigger. Okay. Uh, so this is even like my first big announcement publicly. Oh, uh, I'm going to be dropping basically uh, a full, uh, basically like a web store where I have brands that are going to be doing commissions with or consignments with us where they're going to be selling their clothing through our web store. Okay. Yep, and yep. so we're basically bringing in a whole collection of just different underground artists, underground streetwear people and uh, paying it forward into the community as far as like taking pieces that have been sold out that have already sold out on drops in the past, but kind of giving people a second chance to uh, check out our site, purchase those pieces that may have, you may have missed on a previous drop and, uh, you know, get a chance to like really see other brands that we have uh, on our website as well to kind of get a chance to like, you know, learn different brands in the area, figure out if something's like drippy on something else that you may not have heard of before type shit. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really kind of giving people that, that last chance of like, yo, I missed it on that drop when they dropped it. So now I can get it on what we call it, uh, the revive website. So we're on shop revive now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I seen like, even on the, um, like the feral streetwear page, you would have like the CLOs drop, you know what I'm saying? Like have the hoodie in there and like other homie stuff. I've seen that other hoodie that had like the, um, what did it say? It had like the dope ass graphic on it. Like the human thing. I forgot what it, what brand that was, but I see that you had yeah, like, shout a- out. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Shout out to Enough on that one. I was yeah, gonna say yeah. shout out to Enough. Yeah, Enough that's what it was. He uh, he snapped. He had uh, that super soldier drop where it's like uh, like a soldier getting like uh, like uh, injected with like yeah, serums or something exactly, like that. Yeah, some but crazy the design shit. is just crazy, like all over the hoodie. But yeah, I noticed that that you had other people's you know brands on there, so you're just taking it to another mm-hmm. level and having more of a focus on that type of stuff. Kind exactly like, instead of it basically being under the feral name we want to bring it under under like a store name in yeah. a sense so like you would go out to like cookies and kicks you could pick up any kind of shoe any yeah. kind of drip like we're kind of in the similar uh stratosphere is like we're kind of building an online shopping yeah. platform yeah it kind of makes like all the limits just like you know what i'm saying limitless you know what i'm saying with just like not boxing yourself in you just like anybody could hit you Absolutely. up and you know fuck with y'all pretty much Absolutely. And anybody that's a, an underground brand trying to get their shit on and realistically, if they're doing numbers and they're really like tapped in with their community to where people are really fucking with their pieces, you know, we're going to be interested in having them come to our website and basically expanding the amount of people that have eyes on that brand. So would you say that's the most important part um, in like, you know, what I'm saying kind of standing out in y'all's eyes is like just having that community behind you or at least y'all see the potential of them like developing that community and like also obviously they got dope shit but you know i'm saying is that some like what's one of the main things kind of you looking for i kind of look for people that kind of have their community pretty like stricken in the sense of like when they're doing drops they got people ready to you know cop yeah and uh at the end of the day like if you got a community like that like itching to purchase your pieces right right then and there Uh, We want you on our platform because what that does is that brings your audience to our platform and allows your audience to kind of cross promote with a bunch of different other brands that they may not, like I said, they may not have heard of before. You know, somebody from CLOs may have come to check out their hoodie that we have on on our website, but then run into quoted or enough on there and be like, yo, this is super cool. Like I got to pick up this piece as well. Well, I'm also getting that CLS hoodie I came for. And uh, that's kind of what I'm really trying to like come down to is kind of like a cross pollination almost. Most definitely. Cause even when I went on your website and I was like, just looking at shit to buy, I'm like, Oh shit, he got the yellows. And like, I might not have copped the hoodie, but I followed the page. I'm like, Oh shit. I forgot that. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't really wasn't up on game. And that's kind of what put me up. Like, damn, this is a dope ass packaging, dope ass, you know what I'm saying? Everything that led me to the IG to check that out. You know what I'm saying? And I would have never seen that probably if it wasn't for being on your website type shit. Sure. And the best part is too, is like when we're doing like, we do like TikToks or Instagram reels or whatever. So it ends up reaching such a broader audience than what we normally target ourselves as in like streetwear. So somebody who may not have even heard or even know what streetwear is about may come to the website and then start seeing like, oh, this is a super dope hoodie or this is a dope t-shirt. Like, you know, it's a little bit more out of a price range than what they're normally used to but it exposes them to a lot of these underground brands that they may not have heard of in the past exactly. or at all in the, in the first place. So. That's dope as fuck. Yeah. And that's a good ass idea to just kind of have that 
for like the underground popping shit and even for the people that might not be so popping but got that base ready to buy this shit to you know grow upon that and stack up that's dope as fuck but yeah bro that's uh that's clean I've, i've talked to you a few times and uh just fucking talked about like you know creative shit and you know events that you got going and all the creative shit that you be doing but i'd be you know, I wanted to talk to you today about like getting to know you too. You know what I'm saying? Cause I've never seen you speak on no shit on camera where it's like, Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm into like this shit. It's like, nah, I'm working. I'm growing my brand. You know what I'm saying? I got big plans. It's like, I'm trying to dig into, you know what I'm saying? What James be doing on his off day on his, you know, one off day in the year when he ain't working, you feel me? Like, uh, Hey man, as the, the guy from rip and dip, uh, the guy who runs rip and dip always says is like, there's no off days. So I like, realistically, I'm always working. I'm yeah. always doing my shit, but, uh, you know, obviously I do have a life outside of, of my work and my t-shirts and everything. Uh, and you know, at the end of the day, like I'm here to give you guys that opportunity to kind of dig a little bit deeper into who I am. Yeah. I say very quiet, stay very, exactly, yeah. uh, I don't really like go out and talk to anybody or anything like that, but you'll see me on discord usually in like different VCs and stuff like that. Yeah. So like my VC boys kind of know who I am and what I'm about, like whenever I'm working, but most of the time they're just sitting there watching me work. So realistically, like we just sit and chop it up when, when I'm working. Yeah. Shit. You're never like scared to chop it up or like speak up or just speak on some shit or speak your mind or just, you know, chop it up on some just cool shit, but you're not like hella extra out there either. You know what I'm saying? Like, but shit, right. even you just putting yourself out there, like just recently with like all the reels and shit, and then they going viral, like just off the rip. It's like this motherfucker just started putting himself out there and the shit's already cracking off. Uh, who was it like Barstool picked up and all the other like blog pages picked up that one of the in the casino for sure. I yeah, for real. And that's the thing that shit surprised the fuck out of me, too, because like since day one, I always knew if I put myself out there as like a person that personality behind the brand. I always knew that like people would resonate with that, but as a human being, just like anybody else in the same position, uh, it's, it's daunting and scary to kind of put yourself on like a very vulnerable spot and just be like, Hey, like this is who I am and this is what I'm about. And when I'm doing it, I'm kind of doing it with like the homies as like a joke. So like, it's not as scary as it was when I first started just doing it by myself. Um, but at the end of the day, like, you know, you always have to kind of like look past that feeling of like, oh, well, like if I just put myself out there, then I could just close my app and I could forget that that video even exists. Yeah, for real. But when it starts like sparking up, then, you know, I can start having fun with the people that are in the comments That's and crazy. stuff. Like I had so many people calling or tagging their friends being like, yo, is this you? Is that real and then I go to their page and they look almost exactly like me, but with like a bigger beard or like more freckles or some <laughs> oh, shit. Oh God, yeah. And All so right, I, I just be in there in the comments and just trolling and fucking with people. So like, it just kind of like adds more of like comedy, I guess, to like that, like video aspect to it yeah i definitely know what you're saying because i was always the same way i had like all these big ideas like oh this will be a funny skit or this would be a like a dope idea but i'm just like no i'll just stick to like doing the dope rapper shit and take a picture with you know my lean cup and post it up you know what i'm saying and now i'm like doing all the shit that i had ideas for way back then and it's like it's working and people fuck with it and they're like oh yeah this is dope this is funny whatever and it's like Bro, I should have been doing this, but I was just like scared of like, oh, what are people going to think? Are they not going to take me serious? It's like nobody gives a fuck about that. At the end of the day, like real people don't at least, you know what I'm saying? Maybe bots do, but not no real people. They don't give a fuck. They want to see like dope people do dope shit no matter what it is. If it's funny or, you know what I'm saying, like a banger, yeah, like song it. or whatever. Like I just feel like for sure that's what people fucking with. Yeah, I ain't going to lie. That's how I kind of came across uh uh, you know, your stuff as of recently, because I ain't been on the website or nothing like that, as you was mentioning, but I just saw, like, the all the reels back-to-back, like, bro, that shit, it doesn't come across as, like, um, like it comes across as you having fun and, and like, really enjoying it, and um, I was out of the week at a few of them. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man, I want to ask, is it kind of, like, exhausting, like, um, trying to, like, I don't know if you, like, the process of how you come up with a shirt or you know what i mean picking what you want to you know do um to like kind of s- keep your finger on the pole so like you know what i mean because it's almost like and i don't mean this in a bad way like you've heard of like novelty like type um you know what i mean so absolutely and, but there's obviously a huge ass bag in that shit right so um does it get exhausting to like stay on top of those types of things or you got like kind of a system uh it it can be kind of exhausting in the sense of like, 
Like, if I go through really big gaps of, like, I can't think of anything that's, like, worth putting out into the world, uh, a lot of my mentality is, like, I want to make a piece that, like, is a standout, not necessarily just another black t-shirt with words on it, but something that actually just stands out in the in the world. And, uh, you know, not, I, as, you, as you've seen on the website, like, not everything sticks to the black and white, like, um, I guess, base of, like, I guess, idea or template. Um, but what I'll do is I tend to keep, like, my eyes open, keep my ears open. I'm always watching, like, what's viral, what's on TikTok, what's trending and shit like that. And most of the time, like, it, it tells me, like, whether or not I should throw it on a shirt. So, like, if I hear something that, like, really stands out as a quote, I'm like, yo, like, that's the one. Like, I feel like everybody's hearing that same exact quote right now. So, like, I got to throw that onto a T-shirt. And if it's not like that, then it's usually, like, I come up with a saying or a phrase that I want people to read on my chest and either come and talk to me about it or maybe even like read it off my chest and actually say it out loud, like to me, yeah. like, you know, I want people to walk up and be like, yo, yesterday's price is not today's price. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And then like, just continue walking about their day. But like, that. I know that that shirt really struck them in that moment. That's dope. Okay. So is there, was there ever uh, an idea that you really fucked with, but maybe it didn't come across like, as well as maybe you thought it you wanted it to i think literally i just came out with an idea that i put up on the website today that had a very similar kind of connotation like that where uh the idea was that i was gonna put the on your chest like something that says rave baby and my mentality was i really wanted to kind of attack uh, attack the edm world get more like the ravers kind of like fucking quoted and so I literally went out to Hard Summer this year, took like 50 like pre-made Rave Baby t-shirts, try to sell them like right on the corner where everybody's like walking by, everybody's going to see it. And what I had noticed is that like when you go out to a rave, you're really not trying to spend money on merch. You're really just trying to spend money on like drugs or <laughs> yeah. alcohol or whatever to get you fucked up. Yes. And so like as people are walking by, they're all kind of cracking jokes and shit, kind of smiling, whatever. And I'm like, all right, like maybe this wasn't the right uh spot to try to push my brand mm -hmm. and i was even selling them for cheaper than i saw them on the website so like you know I, my eyes like i'm i'm striking deals left and right i'm taking l's like on each sale type shit just to try to see if i can get this like this product to move in the event like on the same day and really just make a whole promotion out of it um but it ended up not working out the way i wanted to uh, i put it up on the website regardless just to see if i could still move the pieces or not but as i've like looked at it I don't know if it necessarily like resonates perfectly with what quoted is like the idea is a cool idea, but like quoted is like this idea of like, you know, I want to have like a funny slash shock value slash like music related piece that yeah. like makes me connect either with the artist or the joke. And uh, I feel like Ray baby is just one of those things where like you can slap it on your chest and it's more of like a title that, you know, as a joke yeah, within your like friends a, group, like a niche thing, like within like that lane type of thing. Yeah. And so I kind of closed myself off because of that. So like, I feel like those are like some ideas that like when I look at when I make originally it's good, but then like, as I'm digging deeper, as I'm going through TikToks and trying to find content to like tie it together, uh, I start to notice that, like, maybe this is kind of, like, a little bit further out of the lane than what I was trying to do originally. Uh, yeah, that makes hella sense, to too, that. for sure. Because I was like, that that sounds like a good-ass idea to post up outside, but then it is, like, a thing where it's, like, you kind of have your fit ready to go to that festival. It's, like, kind of, like, a set yeah. thing. Like, yo, we're already dressed, like, uh, it's... But yeah, that that's I mean, crazy. And just no one how, wants like, to carry like, like a t-shirt over yeah. their shoulder all day type shit. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. I was just like a little detail like that. Just that culture just changes like from you selling out to like, you know what I'm saying, it not doing as well. That's yeah, and my thing was is like, I did it as more of a promotional stunt and everybody learns from everything that they do. For and sure. definitely I learned from like trying to take it out to that community and realizing it wasn't going to move as well as I thought. So then, you know, it, it brings me back to the drawing boards of like, okay, how can I restructure this for something else in the future? Exactly. And uh, it's, you know, not a huge L, but at the end of the day, you know, I learn from it type shit. Yeah, because you could apply that same logic to like any culture and just like see the little nuances that would like, you know, help you in that, those situations move forward. So, Thanks. yeah, that Thanks. Was that's clean. Uh, but uh, just like going back to like way, way back, were you born and raised in L.A.? 
Uh, no. Okay. So, uh, going back to my roots, uh, I was born and raised in Arizona. Okay. Uh, I was born in Phoenix, moved around Arizona, like multiple different times, yeah. uh, ended up back in Phoenix for like my high school days. Uh, once I graduated high school, uh, I went to college, uh, locally out there and they gave me an opportunity to like, Hey, yo, we want to hook you up with a job anywhere you want. So I was like, shit, like, let's go to fucking LA, yeah. man. Like land opportunity. <laughs> yeah, let's like make something happen. Hollywood. And, uh, the internship they landed me with, like I ended up working, uh, as an audio engineer. So, uh, I went to school for audio engineering, learned how to like mix and master and all that shit for like uh, records. Uh, didn't really like the music side. So I ended up going to like post-production and got my job in post-production, stuck around for a few years, did my thing and it got boring for me. So then I was like, you know what, let's make some t-shirts like i've been watching the fashion game for like you know four or five years now like i know what's going on like i can make my shit happen yeah and just bought a heat press and just started heat pressing t-shirts in like the back room on the side of the post-production facility like yeah. i'd be working at like 6 p.m and then like once i hit like 10 p.m when everyone leaves i'd so be in the back just up. pressing shirts for the rest of the shift type shit Grinding. so what was like uh the first design is it was a fire or you look back and like god damn that shit was ass I still think my first design is kind of fire, but like realistically, like I pulled it all together with free source materials. So yeah. like a, a free source uh, PNG with like some, you know, text that you can find on Photoshop, layered it together, threw it together, you know, printed out six t-shirts, uh, gave them to the homies, didn't even like try to sell them or nothing. Yeah. And uh, the homies even come back to me to this day and they're like, hey man, I was wearing that t-shirt the other day. And you know, I got a Pizza Hut and the Pizza Hut driver was like, yo, that shirt's fresh as fuck, bro. Yeah, like, and so like people feel like, you know, like the homies feel a little bit special because realistically that's like an exclusive six that I dropped at the very, very beginning. Yeah. And anything else after that is completely different. So, you know, they really fuck with those pieces. That's crazy. Uh, the uh, 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 Piggy uh, said in the chat talking about uh, taking an L, he said, that reminds me of when I used to sell tortas in high school and took an L by going to a Yu-Gi-Oh convention to try and make some <laughs> cash selling food. Everyone would rather starve and buy cards instead. It's like, <laughs> same shit, bro. That's Ain't bad. nobody cool. worrying about food. They trying to get their cards off. That's hilarious. I feel like the food's a, a little bit better, too, because, like, like, I would much rather buy, like, a torta at, like, a <laughs> card event oh, than God, go down to, yeah. like, you know mcdonald's or some shit and be yeah. like oh i'm gonna spend my money and then you know buy a rare ass card oh god and shout out to the cheapa for dropping this up too shout out to you the cheapa um but shit uh so that was like how you got into designing and then w what do you think was like the main reason that kind of made you kind of have that jump from just being that small brand that just giving the shirts to the homies to like being like known and like having like a steady base of people that are like waiting for you to drop or like fucking with your ideas and stuff like that. I think what really kind of like changed everything from like day and night. Uh, and this is like, I'll, I'll testify to this every single time. Uh, I ended up working for uh, Blazzy, which I'm sure you guys already are well versed on. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I, he had, he was basically looking for an assistant at the time. And so when I applied for that job, I was just going in basically to work with somebody that I admired uh, as far as like fashion and everything yeah. that he's done. And it ended up turning out like from my feral brand being kind of like ran at the beginning of my internship with him to like all of a sudden then I started making pieces that I felt like my emotions were on my sleeve type shit, which is when kind of quoted started to become like the baby steps of what it was. Yeah. And uh, when he noticed that I was starting to build that that quoted brand. He really pushed me to like separate it from Feral and really like make it stand out yeah. on its own. And I think with working with him and having like a lot of the homies that, you know, are associated with him or in the industry kind of coming through to the office and seeing what I'm about, mm -hmm. uh, really put me on the map because it was more of like, uh, um, it was more of like people like basically like certifying me as like, oh yeah, like he's also like just as good as everybody else type shit or yeah. like uh, giving me like, like almost like a, a promotion in a way through their own pages, letting their communities know that like, I'm also out here type shit doing my thing. Yeah. Like you were certified think, from that point on pretty much. Like, Yeah. And you know, I, I kind of, in a way like in, in streetwear, I kind of got like my blue check. Yeah. And so like, now I have a lot of people in streetwear that like will look to me and actually like think I'm, you know, take me more seriously than if I wasn't being like, I guess like recommended by these types of people yeah. in streetwear already. 
And I feel like when he kind of gave me that, like, that alley-oop, it kind of, like, helped me push into, like, a stratosphere that I never thought I was ever going to reach until, you know, I got there type shit. Yeah, and let's, for the viewers, let's not get it um, twisted. It wasn't like uh, James met Blasey and then he was just like, oh, yep, you're dope. Uh, you're into the fashion industry now. Like, you worked your ass off. Blasey saw, like, the qualities in you. And that's why, you know what I'm saying, he was willing to, like, push your shit. It wasn't just like, you know what I'm saying, run-of-the-mill type shit. It was like, you busted your ass it was to that, put yourself in that and position. And then it was like. Yeah, it was it was a lot of the work ethic that I've kind of pushed myself into where it was like I kind of wanted to prove myself like not only as a designer, but as an as a worker and be like, hey, like I can hustle just as hard as anybody else in here. And I kind of proved that over time. And then when I started doing my quoted shit, like it was more of like they they thought it was cool and they thought it was funny. So then they were like, oh, like I got to share this with my friends. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily like, oh, like you dropped this product. I want to make sure you get paid type shit. It was more in the sense of like, I fuck with this product yeah. and I want to show everybody. So like that's kind of what really helped me get up. And like, I feel like looking back, if I hadn't been working for Blasi, I probably wouldn't have gotten that same kind of recognition to where I'm at now. Yeah. So I'm honestly super thankful to have like been grown under his wing and everything like that. Yeah, and, uh, you, so you're like in a transitional period right now of like, uh, you know, like you said, like creating that whole hub for uh, what was the name of it again for? Uh, right now we're uh, we're creating a hub called Revive. Like Revive. I said, it's going to basically be like an online shopping e-commerce like store where a bunch of different brands kind of come together in the melting pot. Yeah. Yeah, that that shit's gonna be dope. But uh, in this time of uh, like, cause you're you moved out of the office recently, right? Or yeah. So uh, right now, uh, I went fully independent uh, with Quoted. Uh, we've been doing uh, really well for ourselves. I uh, have a few employees under my wing as well, and uh, with the amount of sales and attention that we've been getting online, continues to grow. Obviously, with our TikToks and videos continuing to get their own traction as well. Uh, we ended up kind of going through a transition period where we're actually going to get our own office, get our own production facility, get our own fulfillment Jeez. facility and just kind of run it all ourselves. Yeah. So I'm really excited for, you know, that next big step for, you know, our brand and anybody else that kind of fucks with us. So just give like a scope, like how many people does something like that uh, where it is all in house? Like how many people do you need? Like what are the you know work hours looking like? Like. You know what I'm saying? For somebody inspiring for something like that, what what is it like? Uh, when I first started doing this stuff, I was working with Blazzy and I was doing my like I was doing like twelve to eights with Blazzy. So I was working my full eight hours. And then like as soon as the eight o'clock, nine o'clock would roll around, then I'd switch over to quoted and I'd basically be running like eight to nine to like roughly four in the morning. Yeah. So like I'm waking up at 12 and I'm I'm working until like literally four in the morning to when I got to crash out, make sure I get my eight hours so I can wake up at 12 and start it all over again. Yeah. And I did that for like a year, year and a half almost. And uh, once I got done with that entire transition, uh, I started like bringing employees on. Uh, so I brought my homie Josh from like high school back in the day. He's uh, somebody who used to uh, screen prints a lot of my earlier feral shirts when I first started up. And showed him what I had going on with Quoted. He was like, yo, like, if you can pay me a check, like, let's run it. And so he comes in, he presses T-shirts. And then uh, I had Ezo, which uh, if anybody knows in the chat, Ezo cuts. Somebody just uh, asked, bless uh, up, bless does, himself. does Ezo work with him still? Somebody just asked that in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, shit, Ezo was just here the other night. I've been sick for, like, a couple of weeks. So he's been out of the office for a little bit. But yeah. uh, he just came by the other night, started pressing some stuff. So... You know, shout out to him. He's been holding us down and really helping us out. But uh, most of the time, they're usually running like six to eight hours at most for like their shifts. Yeah. But, uh, you know, obviously I'm still running my like 12, 14 hour days yeah. because I just have that like almost like a habit now where I've been doing it for so long. Now I just kind of consistently have been doing it. And, you know, I'll be running seven days a week, you know, no off days type shit. Yeah, because I see but, that uh, that's, that's kind of like the just like the culture in that kind of sandbox. It seems like it's just like motherfuckers are machines in there. It's like Blazzy's working 24 seven fucking you're working 24 seven fucking writers in there always grinding like all, all those motherfuckers in there. He's fucking doing some shit. Everybody's just always working it seems like it's just like what is y'all caffeine intake like what how are y'all doing this like <laughs> what is the key to like y'all just 
grinding for so long and just staying consistent for so long? I think the main thing is, is like the community, like, cause like realistically you, you have to wake up and separate yourself from your home life when you wake up and leave your house. And as soon as you enter in the sandbox office, it's like, it's this mentality of like, all right, I'm here to work. And most of the time, you know, everybody's kind of dragging their feet early in the morning. Like, Oh, I just got here. Let me take a dab. Let me just, you know, chill. Like, <laughs> let me watch some YouTube or whatever. And then, you know, more and more people start showing up at the beginning of the day. And then suddenly, you know, someone else starts up like, Oh, Hey, I'm, I'm gonna start working on this. And then it's like, okay, well, if you're working on that, I might as well be working on my shit. Yeah. And then everyone's like, Oh, if they're working, I gotta be working. And then all of a sudden everybody starts working. Yeah. And it's like everybody picks up this pace at the same time and then everybody's like full sprint running by the middle of the day. And, you know, then it starts to slow down as you kind of get towards that eight o'clock, nine, nine o'clock time when, you know, everybody's already worked their 12 or eight hours that day type shit. Yeah. And, uh, I think having that like mentality within close quarters of everybody grinding, everybody creating, everybody just thinking of new ideas really inspires you to want to keep pushing yourself further and faster. And before you know it, like, you know, a week's gone by and you haven't even, you know, it just went by. You didn't even notice it. Yeah. And then you look outside, everybody else is still on the same shit they were on last week. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, like, it seems like time almost moves like a lot faster when you're in that kind of environment. Yeah. Cause it's like, you don't want to be the guy sitting in the corner, not doing nothing while everybody's like busting their ass. It's like, it's like, oh, damn, I got to get with it. Or like, you know, I'm not going to stick around type shit. I feel it's like. not even that like you don't you want to stick around it's just more in the sense of like you kind of feel lazy like yeah. you feel lazy looking at everybody else and like damn that dude's succeeding yeah, it's like and the only reason i'm not is because yeah okay it, like you know you just realize you know you're not doing as much as you could yeah yeah when i look at y'all that's what shelly what i feel like or anybody that's just like i see on youtube or anything that's just putting out crazy output and just working all day every day i'm just like bro that shit's inspiring and it's just like when i'm tired i'm just like damn I, I just know that i gotta go harder you feel me it's like that type of shit definitely it's like what i look up to is just like whenever you're feeling tired you just got to keep going because this motherfucker's working twice as hard as you you know what i'm saying out there for real shit that keeps me pushing the you know as i want to get my new quote at office like i really got to keep my mentality straight and really kind of keep you know, that same time frame of like, you know, everybody else is working just as fast. So yeah. if I'm not, then, you know, I'm going to be left behind. Yeah, but we got, we got stuck talking about work again, man. But outside <laughs> of uh, design, happens like that. design, working, uh, any type of business, what do you like to do? And like, if there's any type of off time, you know, video games, whatever, uh, like you said, you'd be in the discord chopping it up with the homies, uh, but you still working during that, like on your downtime, <laughs> what is James doing? You feel me? uh normally I, i'm a i'm a huge gamer uh lately i had like obviously with all the work and shit like that i haven't been gaming as hard as i used to like you know i grew up in high school like playing call of duty modern warfare every single day after school yeah. like as soon as i'm coming home throwing off the backpack fuck homework i'm on the xbox yeah. just playing until like you know until i have to go to bed and uh i've been a huge gamer all my life uh right now like I think the only thing I've really been fucking around with is like a game called Binding of Isaac. And then if I'm fucking around with that, then I'm usually like on the RuneScape account, still trying to grind and trying to get my levels up and shit. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I stay kind of classic with that. But uh, if I'm not gaming, like I'm just, you know, Netflix binging or some shit like that. Like, okay. uh, I know that like HBO, they just came out with that new uh, Game of Thrones spinoff. So I've been rewatching all of Game of Thrones right now, trying to like catch up and remind myself what happened. Yeah. And then yeah. I can rewatch all that. A lot of my homies are on that one. What What do you be watching on Netflix? My homie's been pressing uh, Better Call Saul on me for fucking months. But uh, what that's you, a good what, show. What I, you been I watched a couple of seasons of that. That shit's fire. Uh, I I kind of fell off on that too myself. Uh, if I'm ever on like Netflix or Hulu or anything, like I'm always like you can guarantee if you ever come into my office or my my house, there's usually an animated TV show going on, whether it be like South Park, Simpsons, yep. like Family Guy, anything like that. Okay, yeah, man like, of culture. There's always something a man of culture. Animated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, I just that's fuck with my animated shows, man. They're, they're funny, man. So I yeah. just, uh, I'll, I'll binge through all that and I just re binge through over and over again. Like, I've already seen Futurama like 14 times through, but yeah. I'll still play it from the beginning. Watch that's it all how I am with through. Family Guy for show, sure, bro. I've probably seen every episode <laughs> like seven times for show. Sure. But, uh, uh, but besides that, I've been watching like, uh, have you ever heard the the show Reservation Dogs that everyone's been advertising? On, I, like, I, I've heard shit? about it. Yeah, yeah. I never watched oh, it though, but I hear a lot about it. I've been is it, <laughs> I've been yeah, watching. see, 
you already know what's up then like the the fucking the show's good man like show you definitely gotta check good. it out show's fucking good. that's what's up yeah i just been on fucking uh w- whenever i hear blazzy talk i'm like yeah that that's how i am he said he's just on youtube 24 7 that's just me bro i'm just on youtube my algorithm knows me bro i'm watching fucking so many random fucking things bro i can't even like list off it's mostly hey, podcasts and shit I stay off YouTube religiously because like my algorithm seems to think that I'm still stuck in like 2012 <laughs> because like every time I watch something, it always like goes back to Playboy Cardi, Maxo Green Dash, uh, <laughs> Fetty song. Yeah, Fetty on, and it Fetty always Fetty. plays it, bro. Every single time, bro. Like I watch, it doesn't matter what I watch. I could watch a Minecraft tutorial video. And then after that's the Fetty song coming up. It's that's just like, bro, hilarious. like my YouTube does not like me. Yeah. That's hella funny. But shit, uh, Skrilla, what you been on any uh games lately or shows? I ain't been on no games. You know I ain't been gaming. I do want to join you though when you playing Red Dead though. I, oh yeah, yeah, we was gonna that. hop on Red Dead. Yeah. Uh, we've been, okay. We've been playing a lot of Fortnite, Rocket League. Uh, what else we've we been playing lately? Uh, GTA. Um, I think the homies were hopping back on Destiny recently because there's like a new raids and shit like that um i forget i forget what else we i'd be i'd be gaming it up I, i'm gonna stop gaming on stream because uh, everybody leaves once i start gaming so fuck y'all for not <laughs> wanting to watch me game but it's all good you feel me we'll do like uh cool music shit and podcasts and talk to dope people like james on stream instead but i'm gonna still hey, game well, I'm, off here, I'm here for, for the game and streams too so you know <laughs> yeah you'll be know you'll, you'll, ever... you'll be one of the three people still around and shit. <laughs> no uh, but yeah. But uh, um, I got a double-sided question for you. What what would you say is the hardest part about running a brand? And then what would you say is the most rewarding part about re- running a brand? Uh, I'd say the hardest part is just, like, knowing where, to, I guess, to grow next. Um, that's kind of at least where I'm at right now. Like, I could drop any words on any T-shirt and, like, hopefully it sells type shit. But, like, realistically, like, how am I going to grow my community is where my mind is at right now. Like I have people that are just there just, you know, Oh, Hey, it's a funny shirt with some words on it. But like, I want people that like really fuck with the brand or really fuck with me. And like, I really want to bring them to closer together, get a chance to like really get to know some of these people and like understand who's actually out there purchasing the brand. And, uh, not only that, but I want to do like, I want to do pop-ups and events like that. Yeah. But like everybody else does, that's a big brand, but like, I don't want to, you know, become like this, uh, this L promotion where it's like, I want to go out and then nobody shows up. So like my mentality is like, okay, how can I make something so spectacular that anybody in the LA area would want to come by and just check it out just to see what's popping. And, uh, that's kind of where my mindset is at. And it's a little bit challenging because you really have to think a little bit further outside the box than Mm -hmm. you would, you normally would. Uh, especially in like an event space or like trying to make sure that it's something that's entertaining for anybody to come in and have a good time. And uh, I feel like that's probably one of my most challenging things right now. Uh, As far as like rewarding goes, bro. And I, I, everybody can, everybody will most likely answer the same question or answer this question the same way. I feel like the most rewarding thing about having a brand is seeing the people wear your pieces yeah. that take photos and go out and do stuff like you know you'll talk to people on instagram like hey i wanted to buy this shirt for this festival and you're like okay yeah i'm gonna get it out to you and then you see the photos of them wearing it at the festival yeah. and it's like oh shit like they actually went out they went and did what they said they were gonna do and not only did they do that, but they took photos. Yeah, and like I forget uh, the big homie's name. He's met like 500 rappers and he's always wearing a quota T. Uh, <laughs> shout out Mo. His, yeah, shout out to Mo, bro. He's, he's, he's a legend. Flawless sure. like Mo on Instagram. Yeah, yeah dude. I uh, He hit me up actually on Instagram. He saw my brand and he was like, yo, like I fuck with this shit. Like, let me model for you. And I was like, let's run it. Like, I don't, you know, I don't really know you like that. And, you know, you know, you're fucking with the brand. So like, you know, let's see what you can do for, you know, the brand. Mm -hmm. And he came and like, just started repping shirts and everywhere. Like, I didn't know that he was meeting all these different rappers. Didn't know he was meeting all these people. And when I started seeing like the little Tekka photos and all these different photos of all these different rappers he's hanging out with, I'm like, Oh shit. Like, I think I must have put my products in the right person's hands yeah. because realistically, like this dude is going crazy. And, and no, then he went viral on Twitter and and no funny that. shit. It's like a lot of streetwear brands are only making shirts up to two X. So it's like 
for the big homies, it's like there's big dudes out there doing it up, you know what I'm saying, uh, making connections, networking just like everybody else, and they can't fit into a lot of brands that don't make shit. I mean, I see a lot of brands that make, like, only 36 pants and, like, an XLT. It's like, motherfucker, I'm trying to wear that shit, too. So it's like that's a big part, I feel like. It's just, like, having, you know what I'm saying, larger sizes for the the big swaggy homies to, you know, swag it out. And now he's like, I feel like, one of like the staples of like the quoted like when i think of quoted it's like i think of him with like all these rappers like dapping him up with the quoted t on it's like that shit's crazy how that is nah for real and that's the thing is when when i did feral like i was only doing i think two x's max Mm -hmm. but i would get told by so many people like oh yo if you had this in three x i'd get it or if you had this in five x i'd get it yeah and i just got tired of hearing that because like realistically like you're right. There's so many big homies out there that still show love in the culture, but like they kind of get discriminated against in a way where it's like no one wants to put the extra time or money into trying to build those bigger sizes. Yeah. And with the way that our brand is ran, it's a easier for us to do something like that. So of course, like I'm going to leave the uh, options to go all the way up to five X. Yeah. And uh, even now, like I'm learning that like there's certain other blanks that I like found that go even higher than five X. So. Yeah. I kind of want to start including even larger sizes all the way up to like seven or even like 10 X. If I can find a 10 X type that'll shit. Be clean. That'll like, be I don't know crazy. who's out there running a 10 X. It'll be groundbreaking. But... You see Shaq nah, in the real, quote like... at LA, then we going to know what's up. And we going to be like, James knew it, man. He knew it was good. Nah, for real. <laughs> no, but you hear I that mean, all to. these brands out here, man, make your shit bigger, bro. For the big homies. Even if you got to charge a little extra for that three, four, five X, motherfuckers will pay that shit bro because they, they want to the big homies want to get drippy too man that's all we're saying i learned that shit too man they'll always pay for it yeah. and like you're right though like when it comes to pants like i'm a 38 so like whenever i see that it stops at 36 i'm like bro like i really wanted these yeah, pants or real, i really wanted bro. these shorts yes. man. Like, yeah it's like i didn't even have a chance at getting them motherfuckers but uh no, um uh, moving on to, uh we seen you on the gulag stream bro put in a long ass shift <laughs> behind the boards running everything while everybody fell asleep blazzy was supposed to be up running and oh yeah i'm good bro i got you <laughs> knocked out hella quick and it was just james left on the boards uh speak on your time on the gulag stream and uh do you want to do more on camera content because like a lot of the chat was fucking with you you know everybody was throwing w's at you uh at the end of the stream saying you're a like integral part of it like speak on that and just like what for the future if that kind of like opened your eyes maybe or whatever uh it definitely opened up my eyes a lot because like yuri's always kind of been like this guy that i've known been doing his streaming thing he's always been associated with no jumper in my eyes and then like over time i started seeing him around the office more and more because uh, i didn't realize that him and blazzy had a very close friendship together and uh as we started to kind of run into each other more and more uh Yuri's always been super friendly and he just became more and more like open and more cool, like with who I was and what I was about. And uh, when that whole gulag stream went down, uh, I already knew when we were going to go in, like, I was like, bro, like these motherfuckers are going to crash out. Like (laughs) these guys are going to fall asleep. (laughs) Everyone's going to fall asleep. I already know it. And no one's going to keep up with donos. So like, I just wanted to do like my part, I guess, in a way where it was like, uh i wanted to help out and kind of leave an impression with yuri like hey you know i I fuck with you and you know everything that you've done for me like i'm happy to do for you back yeah and that's kind of what i was doing at the gulag and of course you know like i said everybody crashed out at a certain point you know everyone's snoring behind me so i was just like bro like yuri's snoring everybody else is snoring like riley's not even here anymore like i'm just gonna hang out in the chat and just start shooting and shooting the shit with everybody and so i started just chatting it up with everybody started making jokes and stuff and uh it was a lot more fun to me. It like reminds me of the whole like being in Discord and BC and stuff with a, bo- a bunch of the boys. Yeah. Like you start making jokes with people. People start talking about like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that to him. And like you start encouraging people to start doing like shit, like you know, slapping people in the face with, with the, the fish, fish and stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, the the, so, the fucking water cup fish slap combo, like in the very <laughs> morning or the middle of the night. That was the craziest shit for sure, bro. Nah, for real. And that was like, it was a very fun time for me just as, you know, a jail guard is what they yeah. called it. And uh, I had no idea that I could have that much fun with something like a Twitch stream. So like it really opened my eyes to want to do more content with Twitch streamers. Like, yeah. for example, like that inspired me to want to reach out to you and be yeah. like, hey, like if you guys needed any guests, like I'd be more than happy to jump in. 
because I've always kind of wanted to be with you guys as far as like having the fun and everything like yeah. that. So like, I kind of want to incorporate a little bit more into my schedule now that I have a little bit more free time. And, uh, you know, obviously with something like the gulag, it was such an extreme, such a crazy like idea. Uh, when I got involved, I even told Yuri, I was like, bro, throw me in the gulag. Yeah, like, I'm the, totally I, down. Like, I said the same thing. I said buddy. the same thing. I was like, bro, throw me in that motherfucker. The only thing I won't do is <laughs> shave the mullet off, bro. I'll do whatever else, bro. <laughs> Taze me up. <laughs> You got to put that crazy ass dono for the, for the mullet. Yeah. Like I need like 5k or something, bro. This is, pat <laughs> this is patented, bro. I can't do it. <laughs> no, but no, that's just uh, dope for sure. That yeah. Was, it was, was a fun time, honestly. On there. Yeah. I had a great time. The only thing I didn't like was, uh, the six in the morning. Like somebody had donated like, yo, slap Yuri in the face. With that the was fish. it. That was, was the like, one I was bro. thinking of. Yeah. And you got to wake woke, him up and slap up him. <laughs> yeah like waking up somebody is one thing but then when they're like nah i'm not gonna wake up it's like bro like first of all like you and i have only met like three or four times and then now i gotta like be like yo no you gotta get up and i gotta yeah. slap you in the face with this fish <laughs> and like i did it and like i felt so bad afterwards like i went back downstairs and started typing all sad and it just wasn't <laughs> Oh, God. My element. yeah that's fucking hilarious but that was the best part of when you were there no cap that was like everybody was when i woke up in the morning hopped in you were still awake i'm like god damn you still awake <laughs> everybody in the chat was just talking about you slapping him with the fish like three hours ago <laughs> like it was hella long ago <laughs> they was still talking about it. i'm like that's crazy but, but yeah that shit's nah, dope bro cool. and I, I we definitely look forward to you seeing you on cam more and shit bro and like uh just like with you and blazzy but on a smaller scale like yuri's like fucking validated me like as like doing the stream and shit like most of the people that come by the stream is like people from you know harmonious gang and from yuri's stream so it's just like him kind of just like uh shouting me out a few times or playing my music or doing shit like that just opened the door to people being like oh yeah you know what i'm saying this dude's like working and putting in work and dropping dope content and shit like that and it's just like little things like that Not bro if i never like became a mod for him it just made i don't know what the fuck i'd be doing you know what i'm saying <laughs> like i don't know who what i'll be trying to get people to like look at my shit with you feel me so it's just like that's just dope for sure so. I'm super proud of you, man. Like uh, seeing No Jumper give you that shout out, like that yeah. that really hyped me up because I was like, damn, like I know Moose has been like grinding for a little <laughs> bit, yeah. trying to get his own audience going, and for them to recognize you on that platform was like, damn, like yeah. shout out to you, bro. Like appreciate you, you. Like like we talked about earlier, it's like you kind of put yourself out there. You really put yourself on camera. You had yourself. You, you know, you're having a good time. You're having fun and your audience is really resonating with you. So I really fuck with that. That you know, you're pushing yourself to kind of build that platform for yourself yeah i appreciate that for sure but like just looking at like you and blazy and like the harmonious gang and like all this shit bro it's just like i'm studying this shit bro and like really taking notes and seeing how people move and how people do shit and just like applying to that and not trying to jack shit but just like put my own spin on it and like do dope shit that like because it's just, just like y'all just do shit that like attracts people because y'all do dope shit it's not just like some gimmicky type shit it's like y'all actually are doing doing the real fucking deal, bro. So it's just like I'm just aspiring <laughs> to get like motherfuckers like Yuri, Toke, Blazzy, all them that just like got their own thing going, got their own base, and are doing it up, bro. So that, it's just hey man, it's dope. You're, gonna, you're gonna have your own mullet gang episodes like one day where oh, you know, you're just gonna have so many people coming through rocking a mullet. Like, <laughs> yeah, like when you was uh, when you was talking about the dudes looking like you with the beard, bro. When I was on that Baby Tron tour, <laughs> like almost every person that came up to me after was like a fat Mexican kid. Like, bro, your music was hella dope. I'm like, I'll take it, bro. Like, I'll have an army of fat Mexican kids out there, bro. We we on the way up. But no, that, that, that's that just is. definitely dope, bro. And uh, I'm definitely trying to keep working with you and doing content with you. And I'm, I'm going to be coming out to L.A. soon, hopefully shooting um, a high ones with uh, Yuri. So, I, uh, But if you would ever be down, bro, I'd be down to go out to L.A. and shoot a high ones with you, bro. Uh, and we could it, do man. an EP, bro. I feel like that would be dope as fuck. We could, uh, you know, say and nah. chop it up, uh, get to know each other even more, bro, and get super duper high on camera. So on just, just let me know. I'm bro. totally with it, bro. I'm with yeah. it, man. Like anytime you're in LA, just hit me up. Like I'm always down to to link with y'all. Like, yeah, I'll definitely uh, hit you up. You know, Skrillis, before, you know, same thing goes for you, bro. Like if you ever in LA, bro, like tap in, bro. I'm gonna take care of y'all. Oh God, yeah, we for surely will, bro. 
Um, but shit, uh, anything the chat wants to ask James while he's still here? Everybody's saying just W James, uh, Harmonious Gang, Mullet Militia W W. Uh, damn, this low key inspiring. They was asking about Ezo. You said Ezo's still with with the gang, rocking. Uh, this dude said, "Damn, I just realized this guy that works with Blazzy, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the man himself." Uh, shout out to everybody that came through, bro. What's, what, what are they saying in chat? WW. James, you were killing Yuri's wax, right? <laughs> yeah, you already know. I was up, I was up smoking, and uh, Yuri like left me with a gram. He's like, here, here, just so you have something to smoke. I was like, shit, like, I'm happy then. You know, yeah. I got something to smoke. I'm down to chill. Yeah, James, James. smokes for sure. I'd seen him dabbing all the fucking time. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to... Uh, show anything on yeah yeah uh, yeah you Twitch can show whatever or... yeah i take dabs okay. for fucking five dollars on here i got my whole rig you know i got the baby rig that y'all yes, have sir. seen i got the that. baby rig too oh, okay <laughs> i got the I little, say, the like, little wax casher really... on here you, know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Yeah, you got you got a bunch of different attachments on there hell yeah got the little... shout out Nika. Oh, uh, shit. Too. I see you. Keeps the rig kind of cleaner <laughs> and shit. Yeah, shout out to Nick. I didn't even know this shit existed. I didn't even know there was something. I'm have to like get that. something like that. Like, I always get, like, just, like, build up in, inside Bro, my, I like, never rig, get that so, shit like, anymore. Like, I haven't, you know what I'm saying? We don't ever have to clean it pretty much. That shit stays damn. hella clean. I'm but, yeah, one that, of those. that was hella funny when he was complaining about uh, all his wax being gone. I'm like, bro, you can't complain <laughs> about the man that just did like a 12 hour shift on your stream and, and complain about him taking a few extra dabs. You know what I'm saying? But he wasn't really mad. It was just funny to be like, he was looking for his wax. And he's like, bro, they smoked it all. Oh my God. <laughs> that That's how I feel every time I'm working like in any kind of environment around here. Like, everyone's like, yo, James, let me get a dab. Let me yes, get a dab. It went from like, I go uh, home, like, it went from like gum in high school to like fucking when you pull out the dabs, everybody's like asking for a piece, asking for a piece of a dab. <laughs> Take a Not dab. Real. Take a dab on the pod. I don't even got the torch with me or I would, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think uh, we'll, that that was all that I had. Uh, Skrilla, did you have anything you, you want to get off your chest or anything? Nah, man, I ain't got that. Not speaking speaking on chest. So let's do a little drip check. Oh yeah, we can do a little quick drip check. You know what I'm saying? Since uh, yeah. we got we got a whole lot of drip going on, I'll start it off here, man. Uh, got the supreme. Little new era, little green thing. Uh, you know what I'm saying? The good, good quoted. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, good like quoted team. Uh, I, some basic little black cargos have hella dog hair on them. And, <laughs> uh, some uh, Nike socks and the world's worst uh, slides. Shout out to the homies at world's worst and shit. I see the homies at, I see like Jason from No Jumper and hella people. I think even Riley got a pair of these. Um, so shout out to them, bro. At Sacramento, a uh, little brand doing it up. So shout out to them. Yeah, yeah. The world's worst. Let me go. Yeah, I've been seeing their slides. I know. I see them, and I'm like, are they same ones, or is it just like they got the same manufacturer or something? But then I seen that they he would like followed their page and shit. So I was like, that's dope. I gotta go second, so the drip manufacturer, drip god, can go last. Close. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> uh, but you know what it is, you know what it is, hand painted, you know, Skrilla don't sleep, straight up camo style. Yeah, the custom uh, Skrilla don't over. sleep. I, I had to come with the theme, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't have a T yet, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but um, shout out to the man, you know, Austin 316, you know what I'm saying? The Stone yeah, Cold, man. yes sir, that shit's hard. Uh, I figure it'll fit in today's theme. Yeah, it fits the theme, you match the theme. <laughs> Trash ass team, but shout out to the yes, sir. Shout out to them weak ass boys. Shout out to the Kings, <laughs> you know. And then, of course, uh, shout out to uh, Nico for putting me on, ha having it in stock for me. No, yep, carrots, the carrots, yep. Oh, yeah. Nico, Nico, dead stock, uh, uh, underscore, you know, what I mean, if you're trying to get his shit off, tap into uh, smoking <laughs> RN, <laughs> he might have some for y'all. Um, but uh, yeah, man. Hey, before, oh, yeah. before James starts his uh, decuff co said, James Dono to take his, uh, Yuri's bed right when he laid down was classic. <laughs> Bro, the first night he was doing the gulag, I was watching. That was, like, my first time really watching, like, stream. And so I started, like, donating, like, a couple, like, $2 text-to-speech ones. Yeah. That started, like, ramping up into, like, oh, $30. Yeah, I was right donos. there with you. I remember. And then the I $50 fish. 
And then, like, I saw him, and he was so tired. He's like, man, I'm just tired of just doing anything. I'm just going to, like, lay down and just, like, puts the blanket on. I was like, uh-uh, I don't think so. And then I just, you know, submitted that, like, take away the bed shit. Yes. And that had – I was – dying in the Bro, office. Bro, I was like right watching. there watching the stream at the same exact time. I remember all them donos coming in and he, him just being <laughs> so sick and tired, bro. And I was every, the whole chat was just dying, bro. Like a thousand people. <laughs> that shit was hilarious, bro. I definitely made a memory for sure. So shout out to, what was it? DK? D, D uh, Cuffco? Yeah, D Cuffco. Shout out to D Cuffco for uh, the, yeah. the James memory on fucking Yuri stream. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, for my my drip chick, I got uh, I got, <laughs> stuff. I got that that good. I came here to fuck quoted. <laughs> yes, you know, sir. Yeah. Perfect Classic. shirt. This is one of the pieces that I made from when I first started doing like this run. So like this is like day one piece. Yeah. Uh, I got these. Uh, Those sweatshirts look hard. Sweat shorts. Uh, this is by Bonded. If you guys have ever heard of Bonded, a uh, fantastic brand that we've had. Is that like in the is past. that like puff print or is it, is it just yeah? Right? It looks puff puff print. Yeah, it's puff print. It came out super hard and like over time. Obviously, it's it's gained some cracks and stuff like that. But yeah, I feel yeah. like the cracks kind of give it they like give a little it bit little more character. Like personality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then of course, I always got like the beaded ass black Air Force. <laughs> yes, on, sir. The work shoes. The work shoes. The work shoes. <laughs> Yes, I got the, I got the beat up ones, and I got the freshies inside the closet. Just yeah, in case, just you know, in case you got to step out. Yeah. Fresh. That's so funny. Fresh. Uh, Sloppy said, "Ask James if he remembers talking to me in Discord." Sloppy Poppy. Bro, how could I forget Sloppy Poppy? For some reason, like that name is so hard to not remember. Like, of course, I remember Sloppy Poppy in the chats. Hey, and I was trying to yeah. end the Grab fucking. Something real quick. I was trying to end the fucking pod, bro. We still got to cop it or stop it to do. I got, I got shit pulled up. Oh, Let me pull shit. it up. Let me pull shit, it up. You run that. I'm a, I'm gonna take a dab right now. Yeah. Yeah. For pull the chat. Up. Smoke with the chat. I mean, it, it's not a, it's not a feral slash coded stream Oops. without me taking a dab. That's pretty much. I don't sure. have one, but I'll fuck with this little rain stick. <laughs> <laughs> Vibes. <laughs> Get that shit on me. <laughs> Welcome to the motherfucking homie verse. <laughs> oh, there it is. Rain Get this pulled up. Me. Yo, Sloppy Poppy just said, uh, "W James, I want to hit him up for a T-shirt." Yeah, bro, him hit up. me up. Tap me, tap in, bro. Like I got you. Like. Let me share my screen. One time, one time. Uh, the website is the is that feral or is that what quoted? Right now it's uh shopferal dot com. Uh, but like I said, uh, with the revive transition we're going through, mm -hmm. uh, you can still do it right now, but uh, it'll still take you to the same website. But uh, shoprevive dot us. That's gonna be the new like URL that I'm gonna start pushing like crazy. So I see you. Okay. Shoprevive.us, it'll still take you to the same spot. It just might look a little funny right now. Gotcha. This guy fucks. <laughs> yeah, we just dropped, uh, I think, four or five pieces today. Uh, I've been slacking for a little while, uh, going through a transition, but uh, ended up just putting up a, a bunch of pieces up today and then announcing it on my story, letting people know, like, you know, at least we got some new, something new, something fresh. If you've been watching us for a little while, and uh, definitely the this guy fucks is probably like my favorite shirt so far out of that like five pieces that I dropped. Yep, I appreciate you dropping that link, uh, Slavi Poppy. We'll pull it up I'm right sure now that. too. It's like y'all, y'all could do this. It's like it's like based off maybe like a joke or some shit you think is funny, like, but it, it could reach such a wide audience that see this shirt on somebody you wouldn't least expect no nah, for real and the thing is is like uh what's funny is like this guy fucks was an idea that i had thought of in the past but never really ca like cared to do anything with and then uh the other day like me and my boy josh are just working in the office trying to find like something to watch on tv while we're working 
And uh, I put on Silicon Valley, which is like uh, an HBO show about like a bunch of tech guys uh, trying to build a business and like really trying to become big just as like a way to like inspire us to keep pushing. And like one of the first like jokes that I remember in that show that really stood out to me was this guy fucks. And it's just like this guy who walks up to like the nerdiest guy in the group. He goes, yo, this guy, this guy fucks right here. And I'm just like, bro, like that would be so hard to put on a t-shirt. So we ended up just running it up. But yeah, here's uh, the shopfarrow.com right here, y'all. Y'all see it. Like I said, he's got, you know what I'm saying? He's got the revive on the way. They got the Cielos on here. All the quoted real LA. exclusive, real, real good rave babies, brand new. The enough <laughs> hoodie right there we were talking about uh, earlier. The super soldier hoodie. Bitch, I wake up. No stylist. The no right song now. request with the 3M is hard, bro. The 3M, uh, the quoted T is tough. I got another 3M T on the way, so definitely stay tuned for that. Like, it's probably going to be better than this no song request for yeah, everybody that, that's uh, fucking with that piece. Yeah, that 3M is definitely tough, bro. Um, but this is a, a little segment we like to call Cop It or Stop It. We're just going to go through some shit. Just let us know, you know what I'm saying? Some are collections, some are just single items. If uh, you would cop it or if they need to stop it. Um, the first one we got looks like is the half evil drop. They just dropped. What was it? It was today. Wasn't it? The, all this uh, stuff it was, yesterday. Today. was it yesterday? Yesterday. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. So half evil dropped yesterday. They dropped a bunch of dope shit to me. You know what I'm saying, um, uh, there's a few standouts, but I mean, all of this shit is pretty dope to me for sure. Everything's still running. Okay. The Gene Wallet Crazy, Cielos is nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah. That wallet is dope as fuck. <laughs> but uh, just going through. Yeah, he took a photo on some oh, shorts the other day, too, and that shit was like. I was going to say. Uh, I see yeah, that. Yeah, he took a photo with with the shorts, the hectic shorts, yes. and I didn't even know his wallet was on them, bro. Oh, like, God. Like, oh, he he pulled shorts. that shit off, and that shit looked exactly like the tag. That shit was crazy. Not for real. That would be dope if he made some pants and then they had that same exact tag on the back right there. That shit would be dope. Um, but what are y'all thinking of the half evil? Um, what are y'all favorite pieces? I think the all over print tee is definitely my favorite out of all of them. Here we could just go through one by one, honestly, and just a real quick little uh look at each one. That white tee is supposed to be like a UV tee and like I wish they would have added the UV like transformation on the yeah. on the photos because I honestly don't know like how it's supposed to color out or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that piece right there, I was like super into. I thought that shit was super fire. Yeah, I fuck with the design for sure. Then we got the half evil T. Damn, a lot of this shit is uh, sold out. Shout out to half evil. Go crazy. But let's just go to the. This is go to this all over print tee. As soon as I saw this one, bro, I was like instant cop. Yeah, I like, seen it. I'm in I saw Discord. the photos that they posted on Instagram with the yeah, model wearing it. Oh, I didn't even see the Discord. Yeah, I just saw they posted it in the Discord and I was like, bro, ain't no way. This shit is crazy. Then the back with the fucking glass pieces and shit, bro. That Sheesh. shit. This one's definitely heme. That, sure. That's hard. That one's for sure heme. Cutting so all over jumbo print tee. Yeah, that one's dope. That's I great. fuck with that one. So what y'all giving this? A cop or stop it? Cop it or stop it for a half evil's uh, newest drop. Skrilla, I know you're not like uh, super tapped in with half evil. What do you think of just being like, you know, kind of outside looking in to half evil? Uh, um... You know, I ain't gonna lie. I had one of the first half evil tees, so let's let's keep, mm. keep that uh, on the record. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lest but, you forget. Yeah, um, you know, they commented under my shit. It was it was clean at the time. Uh, <laughs> the I, I fuck with this shit, bro, because it's crazy. Because it was like plain back. It was like super plain. Um, and now to see the different types of like clothing, like the sweater, like. Shit's crazy, bro. 
Oh, oh like God. It. And even like Blasi was saying on Disconnected, the way they have the, like the models styled and shit, like they was just, you know what I'm saying, trippy with that shit. So I feel like that made a big part in like uh, the appeal of certain pieces is just like seeing them on somebody wearing them and like dripping it out type shit. Yeah. No, I think I they did about a good ass like Because I would like never think a fucking pieces. sweater vest like, was dope, but they they somehow made it look dope, bro. <laughs> so, you know, props to them for sure. Bro, bro Ryder was rocking that on a story. Like, I when I saw that sweater, I was like, bro, like, there's no way. I'm not going to buy this. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw Ryder rocking it, and I was like, bro, like, that's how you got to rock yeah. it. That shit's so fire. Like, And it kind of, like, inspired me to want to, like, pick it up. On oh, God. But yeah, I think the monster like, T is dope yeah, no. as fuck too. I think that monster one's dope. That, that one I wasn't fucking with as much. No. Just because like I wasn't like down to see the monster logo just kind of rotated and yeah, used yeah. as a three. Like I if they had that. made a three out of a similar texture like that. Then yeah, I yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Uh that this one is dope too. This fucking the crazy like Blue skull graphic that looks kind of airbrushed. Like that shit looks crazy too. But yeah, uh, what was you saying though, Skrilla? My bad, I didn't mean to cut you off a second ago. Um. Oh, that no, this shit's clean because like they really are like individual pieces. Like they they're hella clean by themselves, but you can also like um, damn near put them together. They they got it, and I that's what I look for. I, I just like. I don't know. I just buy shit that I think is clean, and then I'll just mash them up. But this is that that offers a lot of good options for that type of shit. Uh, Sloppy Poppy said the half evil thong fire as fuck. Don't not sure what he means by that one. Uh, the rhinestone hoodie, <laughs> the earrings, and the shorts are fire. <laughs> yeah, I saw the earrings for show. Sure. Those are dope. Where's the rhinestone hoodie? Is that the red and yellow one? Which one? Uh, no, that one. Uh... I think it's up one. Oh, this one, this one. That one. Uh, T-shirt idea for James. Feral Gamo. <laughs> Bro, like I told Poppy in the in the chat, like uh, I made that as like a sticker back in the day. It was like one of my first drops. And like I went, I remember I went to like Active Ride Shop and like I was like, hey, yo you guys want some stickers? And this girl was like, yeah. And so I gave her like a couple stickers and one of them was the Feral Gamo one. And she goes, Feral Ga- Gamo? Like what? And I was like, you know, like Feral Gamo? And then she was like, nah, I, I don't I don't know. And I was like, all right, then I, I, I feel like this is like a stretch then. No, you. I think he was just around some uh, swagless people. I think that was the only problem. I think, I, I think that's pretty dope. I would have to see him. Shit, we might have to do the the, the sloppy poppy inspired feral gamo yeah, t-shirt. The, 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 let the, let, the let me find brow. out the moose rocking the feral gamo belt buckle. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> the feral that'd be gamo, hard. That'd be crazy. Uh, but yes, yeah, shout out to the half evil bro. Uh, definitely, probably most of this shit will sell out. Uh, shout out to George and everybody over at Half Evil. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say cop it. Um, some stuff I might not rock just cause it's a little too plain, but all the stuff that they, I feel like was like super, they went all out on. I feel like they executed on it. So I'm going to say cop it. What y'all thinking? I, I agree. I think, uh, they got a nice little wide range. Even if you don't like some pieces, you'll definitely like something. I feel like. Yeah. So what you think is girl cop it or stop it. To yeah. You. Definitely. Definitely copping. Yeah. All right, moving on. Uh, the praying Adidas Supernova Cushion Seven is now available. This is praying and Adidas collab. Um, and this is them. What do y'all think about these? Shout out to praying. Yeah, that's a big ass. Like, that's a big come up for them. That's what like, I'm saying. Yeah, they them. they seem like a pretty low key brand. I was trying to do research on them, look at their shit, and they seemed pretty like low key. So to have the Adidas collab. And having like the Adidas collab with a giant praying on the side is that's that's pretty dope. I, I kind of feel like this is a cop too, because like, like normally I would be against white shoes. Oh yeah, I, like I'd be against white shoes, but like this piece is like like knowing the history of like how praying has like grown, and then like 
to see them get an Adidas collab, like I would just buy it just out of the respect. Like this is the thing that's under their Adidas collab, which is what I found was hilarious. The holy that's Trinity like their biggest piece. Like, like that's hella funny. You see every rave girl out there rocking this shit. Like everyone's out there wearing that. Like, I'm not too familiar with praying though. Like what, what, um, what did you see from them? Type shit like of their come up kind of. Did you speak on that? Like uh, what are you asking me? Yeah, yeah, you. Because I I hadn't heard of praying um, before this. That's the thing is like I've seen like a few of their pieces like their their baby tees and stuff, but like the the Father uh, God Holy Spirit like that's like one of the biggest pieces that really like put me onto them. Okay. And like ever since like I've seen that piece not only get like handed out to like different influential people and then seeing like all of them like flick up and like you know really put them out uh i've gone out like i said to even that hard summer event that i had went to just this year i went through and saw like over like two handfuls of people like wearing like that specific like bikini set yeah and like for them to have like a very similar like brand like what quoted quoted has where it's just like words on a fucking garment Mm -hmm. uh to see how they advertise and how they like grabbed those specific influencers and farmed out those pieces yeah like that inspired me to be like all right like i can do something similar when i was coming up with quoted okay that's dope as well so but uh when it comes down to it all that's all that's nice but is this a cop it or stop it You, you rocking these or are you copping them to flip them or what y'all think like I said, I think I'd, I'd cop these out of respect, low key. Just okay. to be like, just because I like their fucking come up and just seeing like them come from like low like brand level to like being able to get something like this, like it inspires someone like myself to be able to feel like I could reach the same. Looks like they're going for one fifty, so not like crazy price point or anything. Pretty standard. Uh, what you thinking, Skrill? I feel like oh. I can see you rocking this for sure. This definitely looks like a Skrilla shoe. Yeah, that. <laughs> What does that look like actually? Um, but yeah, that uh I, I like this. I do. That the underneath bro, the little gum bottom That's my favorite part. Here. That's hard, bro. 150 though. I mean that I mean I get it. Streetwear that's exclusive. Damn. That's hard, I'm gonna say bro. cop it. I'm gonna say cop it. I yeah. fuck with these I, with the right pants. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or like right little cargos yeah, or whatever. Or maybe even with some shorts with some dope socks. I feel like you know what I'm saying you can swag these out for sure. Church out picnic. To, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to prank. Pop off. All right. Uh, so we gonna go ahead and say cop it for that one. We got two copets in a row. This one is a a couple of new little Imran potatoes, just random ass fucking drops I seen that he dropped. He's always dropping random ass tees. I feel like, uh, so we got the black uh, Batman tee. You feel me? What What are y'all thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what are y'all thinking on this one? Cop it or stop it on the black Batman tee with the big ass uh, uh, joint in the mouth. I don't know. Not for me. It passes. The, I mean, it's and then like, we got the white one it. too. We got the white one. Just... Like, I feel it. I, I feel, bro. But would you rock it? Copping. This is a cop it or a stop it. If you ain't gonna wear it, right. it's gotta what's, be a stop it. What's the price point? What's the price point on these? Forty dollars. Forty dollars. Yeah, nah. I don't want to pay forty dollars. Yeah, for that. man, because I could get a uh-huh. I could get a fentanyl tea for forty, man. This you gotta come harder than the uh, than the fucking uh, black true. weird fucking like handsome Squidward kind of style, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like with the booty chin and shit. That shit's crazy. All right, so the unanimous, I think, stop it on the on this one with the new Emerald uh-huh. potato teas. Yeah. Yeah, not my vibe, but shout yeah. out to Amron Potato. He does a lot of dope shit. Just maybe not those ones. Moving on. Sold out. No chance uh, of getting them. No more. That Ash on me, Ashley V2. Shout that's out to how it works, personal. man. If you're not quick on the trigger, bro, at nothing personal, that yes, shit goes sir, quick, that shit's bro. Quick. 
What do y'all think? I heard it think? sold out in like a minute or like six minutes or yeah. something like that. Yeah, like it was I, like yeah, I seen ass. a lot of people saying five minutes and they're all gone. That shit's crazy. Uh, so even though we can't cop it anymore, cop it or stop it on the mm. uh, Ash on me, Ashley V2. He said this is the Latina version. Uh, even though she got blonde hair and looks white, you know, I'll give it to Blazzy. You know what I'm saying? We'll just we'll take his <laughs> word on this one. Uh, the the packaging's A1. I feel like everything that comes out the sandbox, like a lot of the packaging is just crazy. Like from the Cielos and this shit and everything, bro. Like y'all just do like a lot of the extra stuff that a lot of brands don't do. I feel like come out of the, the sandbox and uh, brands associated with it. Damn. Yeah. So, How much was it? Uh, I think the, it was uh, 120. 120. Wow. That's, I mean, this shit's gonna last a long ass yeah. time. Uh, so, I mean, did you see the dude getting canceled bro, on I Twitter? Know Yuri, he's like destroyed his <laughs> already, oh, yeah. bro. Like I, I didn't see like anything until like after the ma- aftermath, like when he like got hooked up with an Ashley himself. Yeah. Uh, I like went and tried to like follow back through his Twitter to see what had happened, and it was like deleted, and like everything was gone. Bro, I saw I that like, shit live and direct, bro. That shit. There was actually people threatening his life over him posting the ash on me ashley i could i could you know, tell you i saw it with my own two eyes it was crazy they were calling him like a pedophile all kinds of crazy shit bro because of a fucking bro. ashtray i was like the twitter mob is different bro I'm like that's why this shit is dying that's off wild. bro because of people like this <laughs> that shit was no, sick that. that's crazy though but you said a uh, yuri is already destroying his shout out to on the is that what's that? you said yuri's already destroying his oh yeah he's like destroyed it like i've seen it's like it's just covered in ashes it's like permanently like you know like just like a whole different color yeah he smokes like 15 fucking spliffs a day he's fucking ashing on that thing every two <laughs> minutes <laughs> <laughs> shout out Jesse the Chef. Yeah, shout out Jesse the Chef, bro. He took a lot of hits for Blazzy and for the Ash on Me Ashley V1. He deserved that V2. Shout out to him. And you know, I think he said he's supposed to like uh like cook up some shit for disconnected or something soon now too. That's hilarious. They said uh, 16 I said they were going crazy in the quotes, LMAO. Shit was crazy to see. Yeah, bro. That shit was out of pocket. No cap. But yeah, that was it. I think for the cop it or stop it. Uh, anything else you wanted to say at all, uh, James? Any shout outs or anything? You want to get off? Uh, shout out to Nate, E, and Edgar. They're the main guys who are involved with uh, Revive, and also the guys that were involved with the Half Evil drop that just came out. Mm-hmm. So. You know, the very talented people. Very, Make sure hey, you guys very check talented them out. motherfuckers, bro. Very yeah. talented. So definitely the the next big thing to kind of keep eyes on. Uh, we just added a new uh, brand called Unphysical Studios. Mm-hmm. Uh, fantastic pieces. You know, he's going to be a great artist that you'll see a bunch of new stuff come out from. Uh, so shout out to him. Uh uh, shout out to you know Moose because realistically you know I appreciate y'all you know bringing me here and everything like yes, that. Sir. So anytime, bro. Can't anytime. wait to you know make more content with y'all. You know I'm totally with it. Oh God, anytime you want to come by, Absolutely. bro, and stop by, or you got something to get off your chest, or something to promote, or whatever, bro. You got a new drop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hit me up. You know what I'm saying? We'll have you come on here. You know what I'm saying? Show it off. Whatever. You know what I'm saying, bro? We we down to. Push that quoted LA Ferrell Street where revive all that, bro. We, we supporting it over here for sure. Make sure to get you the this guy fucks pieces and not the I eat babies pieces. So, <laughs> yes, you know, sir. just making sure that, you know, we got you straight. Yeah, tapped yeah. in already, bro. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you coming by, bro. This has been the Homie Verse Podcast, episode 11. I'm Moose Man, the homie Skrillas down low. And then we got the homie James from quoted LA Ferrell Street where revive US. Shout out. Um, we'll see y'all next time. I'll upload this to YouTube in a couple of days. So see y'all then, man. And-
and uh, I'll be live tomorrow. We're going to do like a little IRL basketball hooping stream probably. So 